Okay, welcome to another tutorial by Corinthians Corey. What I'm going to be covering here is pretty simple, just how to do a tuck-in for a shirt to go into a pair of pants. What I've got loaded up here are two dynamic objects, the dynamic tunic from the Amelie set and the dynamic pants from the Amelie set. What I've done is gone ahead and just made 10 frames as my usual, 1 to 10, and in order to get the shirt to tuck into the pants, I've brought in a torus from the primitives folder. That's uh, your props, primitives. You'll find the torus in there. What I've done is um, brought it in on the first frame, raised it up to about the hip level, and then just made an adjustment to it in the parameters to allow it some girth around the entire hip area of the character, that's Victoria 4, and the clothes that she's wearing. So as you can see as I rotate around, the object itself, Taurus, isn't interacting with anything in the scene. And then once I get to frame 10, or actually frame 5, let me go here, to frame 5, as you can see I've crushed the Taurus into a shape that would hopefully crush the outfit into her as well. As you can see I've already done this simulation so I know it works. So I'm don't need to run through the simulation. So the only difference between setting this up as I've done in any, any other previous tutorials or the way you would do it yourself is I've told the tunic instead of interacting with the pants themselves interact with this torus. So the tunic, your shirt, or whatever you have as a top wouldn't be told to interact with the pants. So in Collide Against and scroll down here. As you can see, I've got the pants off. It's been told, don't interact with the pants. You might be a little confused is that about that. You can have it interact with the pants, but there's no point. The reason why I turned that off is pretty simple. Simply because if I tell it to interact with the pants, then this, sh this tunic is going to have to collide with the pants and then collide with Victoria 4 and instead of just colliding with Victoria 4 it might it'll be tempted to the shirt will be tempted to uh, push itself out of, outside of the pants again and that's not something we want normally what your simulations do again this is normally uh, what they do is your simulations try to push your dynamic clothes out of something for instance uh, it tries to push if I told it to this shirt just to interact with the pants it would try to push the shirt outside of the pants and since we want the shirt to tuck into the pants we have to tell with the tell poser forget about the pants just do the simulation with the torus and hopefully we've set up the parameters for the torus in the correct position with the correct settings so that once the simulation is done it will look like the pants are around the shirt. It's going to take some tweaking to get that correct. You'll have to do it a few times. Usually the simulations for something like this, depending on the density of the mesh you're working with with the clothing, could make it take a few seconds or forever if you have a really slow computer. But honestly, it's not a big deal. Me doing this with uh, this Amelie set, maybe my simulations on this really old computer doing this, maybe about 15 seconds every time no big deal so I was able to set it up try set it up try set it up try and it would kick back the results in a couple in a couple seconds no big deal so uh, as you can see I already ran through the simulation but what you're wondering is does it look like the shirt sucked in well sort of but I didn't do it right but again it's just an example so let me uh, double click this I'll turn this torus off and remember as for simulations, your visibility for whatever the cloth collides with has to be activated. Or in other words, whatever the simulation needs to act with needs to be visible. So as you can see, boom, that's what I got when I did it this way. I had another uh, torus in there as well. So that's what it looks like. And if you're saying, okay, well, what does it look like without the pants on? Let me just go to frame number 10 get a little better result and again I'm only using 10 frames uh, there's the pants off so 
as you can see that's what it actually looks like and yes it can run through the simulation like that as long as you have that Taurus object parented to Victoria 4's hip wherever Victoria 4 goes or your figure assuming the hips in the center of gravity there then the Taurus or any other object you have to interact with your shirt to tuck it in it'll follow Victoria 4 this is why we parent things to the hip instead of the body that the body gives you all these weird funky results and it won't be consistent every time when you load things in and what I mean by consistent is try it <laughs> try loading it in try parenting things to the body and see what happens it's a problem that's why your poser manual for those of you that has a manual tells you parent things to the hip it specifically tells you don't parent things to the body and then it goes into some long-winded explanation about why but if you have a poser manual at least from poser 6 can't tell you about the above ones but you're told explicitly don't bother parenting it to the body some people will and some people do it as a practice good on you but it's the wrong thing to do technically but let's face it we're artists and we don't have to do things technically in the first place we can do whatever we want and especially if this is for you do whatever floats your boat and really this is a tutorial it's not you know your handwritten from Moses guide to how to live your life in poser do whatever you want so I think that's really it that you need to see um, from this you can usually get a lot of um, different examples of other ways to do this because there are other ways to do this this is not the only way this is just the one way that will go really really fast you can use magnets magnets will work it'll even get you a, a prettier result than this but unfortunately it looks like it would make the shirt look more like it's a like a UFO or something I tried it earlier it, the results were fine it just didn't look very natural it looked kinda like I don't know, like some kind of Abercrombie perfectly ironed tuck-in. It just didn't look natural. This one you get bunches all over it. So I like this result. And for those of you that use magnets, you can imagine what it would do. It just doesn't look right. I didn't like it. Some of you will get good results. You can use a lot more magnets. I only use two. Just like now I only use two Taurus primitives. Use whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever gives you the results you want. Uh, let me check this. The pants, anyway. Oh, yeah, these are the different morphs I've got. I need to get this pants back where it came from. Zero. 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 The only reason I'm putting this back is because I'm going to bring some things back into view so you can see how this was set up. Invisible. So check out this first torus. What it does is it goes through, and as you can see on frame number one, I've got it set up to go up, and as you can see, oops, that's a little too fast. As you can see, it starts to push the uh, tunic up. It starts to push the tunic up. So I have one torus to push up, and another torus to squeeze in. So this first torus, all it did was lift the shirt up. Okay, that's great. But let me just uh, turn it off so you don't have to look at it anymore. And then I've got another torus set up to do something similar, but this torus is set up only to uh, squeeze the outfit back into the pants. So again, the first torus lifted everything up, and the second torus squeezed everything in. You're probably wondering, wow, why can't you do that with just one? Well, give it a shot. If you can, great. Um, but I want to do it the simple way and get done really fast. You know, it's a tool. Do whatever makes you feel good. If you come up with some good ways to do it, good good hints or whatever, you know, post them, share them, that way we all know. Let's see. Yeah. Say so see. One squeezed in. I don't think you guys are getting a good view of this though, because I wouldn't be able to see it. Let me sh show it to you that way. I think that's a better view. Okay, check this out. What you do is on this one, have it in the center when you bring it in. This is the one that's going to squeeze the pants into the well, squeeze, sorry, squeeze the shirt into the pants. Right, so, as you can see, squeeze, 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 ta-da, pants are in there. Bada boom. Except I squeezed it a little too hard, and it went through her abdomen. Which is fine, because it's just a tutorial, and I don't have to render with this, so I don't care. And there's a, another weird thing you should know. Uh, let me do this. Sometimes it'll look like 
your display. I don't know if your OpenGL does this. I have a really old computer, so you know, who knows if this is correct or not. But it'll it'll sometimes sh display that your cloth has gone through your figure. When you render it out, it turns out that it didn't actually go through it. It's actually just a bad display. So this might not actually be through her stomach. It might just sh be showing me that it is. You think that's confusing? <laughs> you get used to it. There's little white dots popping up all over. Like I don't know if you can see that one there. But if I render this, there's no displacement on this on these pants or anything like that. Um, that would show. I mean, that would prevent that little white uh, dot from showing. That little white dot is actually the skin underneath for the character. But it's weird. I'm just letting you guys know that there's these problems there. Maybe someone who actually works at Smith Micro can fix that stuff. But then again, again, I have a really old version, so I don't know if this is consistent or not. Maybe they already fixed it. Maybe the last guys who fixed it, who worked with Poser, fixed it. But who knows? Who knows? I've got an old machine and old everything, so I've got no clue. That's why I depend on everyone else to tell me what's going on, because this is pretty sad. I have to find new ways to do things, which is good, because you guys benefit from it, but you know. Honestly, if I had a faster machine, I would not be doing a tutorial. I would have just whoosh, been done with this in a couple seconds. You know, and then I'd never share it with anybody. would be like, ha ha ha, I know, and I'm smart. <laughs> and then I'd be like, oh my gosh, I hate that guy. Yeah, you know, life is like that. Faster people lead, but since I'm really on a slow machine, I, ha I figure I might as well show. And the faster we all learn, the more we all learn, right? Then you guys will share, you know? share that way of course then we all can get better and then a couple years from now once everybody's learned from this then you know I'll learn on my faster machine whenever it's coming in <laughs> one day this is not my computer that I'm using so hopefully you guys learned something and I think that's it I'm going to shut this off and then try something else